Hi guys, Hatch Crammick again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. The roster drama continues and our envoy is getting into the thick of the discussion with Toronto Ultra potentially blowing up their entire team with Scrappy maybe going to Cloud9. There's been talk about Kleenex and Insight where they might go if anywhere at all. What about Envoy? Rumour has it that he's been in conversations with a couple of teams over the last few days, Cloud9 and also potentially the Los Angeles Thieves. This probably means that C9 are looking at the very least at potentially replacing Kismet in their lineup. And with all of that happening and with upgrades potentially due for especially that Cloud9 roster to Los Angeles. Thieves need to step in and make sure they make their team even better. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. This is the Black Ops 6 beta. Here we are on Skyline. I actually played it for a good couple of hours last night just to kind of get to grips with the game. It's an interesting game. I really enjoyed it in part. It doesn't feel quite what I expected it to feel like. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but... It doesn't feel quite like a tryout game to me. I think, you know, people always talk about the engine or whatever, right? I don't even know if people really truly understand what the engine really means, but um, neither do I, to be fair. But I don't know, the game, it feels fun and the movement is actually pretty phenomenal. I will say I don't have a scuff, so I play stick and move, so I jump with R3 and then when I slide, I just press X to slide. And um, it's not ideal playing this game. If you want to use the movement properly, you kind of do need some, you know, maybe I could play bumper, jumper, tat, I don't know, maybe there's something else I could do. But um, look, the game is great fun as it stands, I would say. There's a couple of concerns I have about it, but mostly I had a pretty damn good time. And I think the game is actually really well positioned this year. The time to kill is kind of fast, but um, the movement is phenomenal to play and to use. Probably a bit of work needs to be done on the balance. Obviously, there's been lots of talk about the SMG, right? The Jackal, which is kind of like a 74U looking thing. That's pretty nice. The MP5 as well, whatever that's called, like the C6 or something. I don't know. Like, that's pretty good as well with some attachments on it. So, I mean, look, here's Shotzi absolutely flying around. I know that most people are having a good time with the game so far. Obviously, there are questions about it and things they've got to probably fix. And the SMG seem pretty damn strong at the moment. The XM4 has been pretty underwhelming to me not gonna lie i was um you know i thought that going to be better i think the craig or the amy's or whatever they call it that might be the go-to ar as it stands and um yeah there's guns that kind of look like the sorg there's a gun that's like the 74u which of course is here with the jackal so i think overall it's been pretty promising one of my favorite features actually about the game is this feature which has been noted as clearly true here by j god that rotational aim assist which is what you see here doesn't happen when you get within a certain amount of range. And you guys will feel this when you play the game. Close quarter combat, the aim assist basically disappears. So at this kind of range, you won't get any aim assist at all in your target. If you go a little bit further away, you will. But it means that when you get into these close quarter engagements, it's actually, yeah, it increases the skill gap, I would say, quite considerably. You can even see it here with Shotzi, right? When this guy hits it with some nasty backward slide down the stairs, and okay, Shotzi's getting shot up by like three people here, but nonetheless, you can see how even Shotzi is struggling to track onto this guy because there's absolutely no aim assist to that kind of range. And that I think is a really positive feature. And Trek even confirms this in the replies that the aim assist is definitely changed. I mean, as Matt Scront says, tweaks have been made. Aim assist type, by the way, is removed. So there's no longer like default aim assist, Black Ops Cobb, aim assist, whatever it was. It's just aim assist on, aim assist off. And the aim assist itself has been changed. And honestly, it feels like it's been nerfed. It feels more challenging to hit shots at range potentially and certainly at close range. So I think this is welcome really, certainly from a viewer perspective to see the skill gap in action, right? Because there is going to be this year, undoubtedly, as far as I'm concerned, more of a skill gap in terms of even just aiming, which is something which is, has always been true. I mean, like, Simp might hit every single shot at, like, 50 meters away. Some other guy might miss one of those bullets or whatever. But um, generally speaking, the gap in terms of skill from an aiming perspective has been reducing over the last for years. Dashy, someone will be very happy about this as well because 
you know, if there was no aim assist at all, you'd imagine that Dashi would probably be up there with the best shot in the entire game. So any skill gap on that side, I think is probably a good idea. And Dashi seems certainly on board with exactly that. There was a few cool things noted last night. So Shotzi was in a game here playing against Priester and Hydra. Pretty interesting, I thought, just to note that those two teaming up again. Sky's, of course, here for the ride as well. So look, these guys won a world championship together, but Sib is dropped. So... <laughs> You know, if they can't get scrappy, maybe they can, maybe they can't. So that's a debate that we'll discuss certainly later on today again. What about, you know, Priester? Could he come back? I mean, that would be a wild timeline, would it not? If they drop Priester after winning champs, they bring in Sib. Sib arguably does better than Priester in many respects, but they don't win champs. They come second the next year, and then they bring him back. I don't know what you guys think about that. And even here, we see Shotzi and Hydra, you know, facing off against each other here in the beta. But um, as it honestly is expected to me, Karma is topping the leaderboard, right? It's a DB3, three world championship ring as a player, DB4 as he's now kind of known as uh, the world championship ring as a coach as well, still topping the numbers and um, I mean this is just kind of cool but it's also no surprise, like anyone who knows Karma knows that if he actually wanted to come back, certainly in the first part of a game's life cycle, he just manages to pick these games up ever so quickly. This was another scoreboard from Scum, he's doing the classic Scum pose in the background, drops 100 eliminations for the first time in the beta so far, so pretty cool stuff, obviously his team was kind of overpowered here, I'm not gonna lie. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on the beta so far in the comments below. The other thing that I will say is that the maps are just not great. I mean, Scud is just like, it's, I mean, the way that it's designed, I guess, theoretically, is not absolutely terrible, but it reminds me of like a World War II map or like a Vanguard map or something like that. And it's just painful to play. It's also called Scud. Like, there's no way a map is going to be good called Scud. Let's be real here. Skyline is the best map, I would say, so far. There's the other one with the trains in the forest, which is like, okay. But um, I'm not really, like, the maps aren't great. So let's be real here so far. And I think that's probably the main concern that I currently have or probably the main thing that's held me back from like having an absolute blast in addition to be fair to like the skill based matchmaking or whatever because my very first game I was like yeah okay these guys are going hard. I'm probably just washed up to be fair but there was talk from some of the developers that they are going to bring in some old school you know maps we might get raids back we are probably going to get you know like Hacienda or something so I think the map set for competitive is going to be okay it's just so far in the beta it does leave a bit to be desired and even Siv is talking here about you know, with Simp on that situation. I don't know if Simp's thinking, oh, maybe I could finesse a spot on FaZe, although that seems relatively unlikely as it stands. Octane, of course, talking about the Jackal and how strong that gun is. There's some debate, though, between the ARs and the SMGs again. It's kind of funny how quickly this happens, right? Because Chaxter says, another year of ARs, and then Beans is like, you're brain dead, these subs are a joke. I'm more inclined to believe Beans on this, and really, with what I've seen from the Jackal, that gun is disgusting. But um, the ARs are also pretty good. But then again, with the SMGs, you also get the movements so you can fly around corners and dolphin dive and shoot midair. And that's more easy with the subs than it is with the ARs, generally speaking. This is a problem as well because ranked play is going to arrive earlier this year than ever before. And we already have hackers in the beta. I mean, it looks like Jimbo's officially back in business here. I mean, look at him go hitting all these disgusting headshots. Wow, this guy's absolutely nasty, right? So... Yeah, it's a bit of a problem and a concern and we know that the anti-cheat doesn't really work in this game and hasn't worked for some time anyway and the fact that people are just popping this stuff here in the beta does make it a bit concerning for the fact that his rank's going to be an absolute shambles yet again. But let's talk about roster mania here because there's a few very interesting things to say. Sib tweeted this last night. I always knew, which he then deleted. So people are saying, and understandably, this is potentially related to his relationship with the Cloud9 boys and the fact that they dropped him Well, he's a restricted free agent and so they're not bringing him back as far as I'm concerned. Sib kind of implying that he always felt like this was coming or something to that effect anyway with the relationship that he had with those guys. It definitely wasn't in-game stuff with Sib from like a performance perspective, but um, I think it was more like a personality-related thing. The question is, who do they get instead? But also, will they make another change? Because they are apparently targeting Scrappy, obviously. Why would you not if you're trying to replace Sib on the roster? But if Scrappy comes into that team with Skies, Hydra, and Kismet, 
is Scrappy looking at that roster thinking, okay, great, or is Scrappy thinking, you know what, we could potentially do even better? And this is when conversations have apparently been had with Envoy. Interestingly enough here, and from the rotation mentions in the replies, was this in the draft from last year? Because it was the same thing with Toronto last year. They turned up to Rostermania. They were looking to see what the options were. Were there buyouts potentially on the table? Could they sell this player to that team and get some money for him? Would that work out? Would that make more sense? That didn't happen last year. Eventually, they ran it back. But of course, Envoy wasn't on the team at the time. He then came in to replace Hixie. And even when Envoy was kind of in that free agent conversation and discussion, he was looking at Los Angeles Thieves, potentially looking at the subliners. Boston gave Envoy a big offer, we believe, as well. And eventually, he goes to Toronto. But of course, this was a mid-Toronto. We're doing the same thing with their other players. So Envoy eventually does join Toronto. They win the event. He plays pretty well towards the end of the season. Of course, Envoy didn't have a great start to the year really certainly it's hard point in stage two it was a bit of a nightmare but um at the end of the year the world championship the world cup envoy turned it around but at the same time if toronto are blowing it up if kleenex is potentially gone certainly kleenex and the insight have hinted at that scrappy said outright that he might be playing for a different team next year obviously envoy is going to be in the conversation as well and even adam anabu said from toronto they are considering all options in terms of selling players or changing the team or keeping the team or whatever the case is. So Envoy is apparently holding talks with both Los Angeles Thieves and Cloud9. Now, the Cloud9 situation is potentially very interesting, obviously, because first of all, that makes it pretty clear that Cloud9 are at least considering, if this is true, replacing Kismet, because Hydra ain't going anywhere. So if Envoy is having conversations with Cloud9, then Cloud9 are at least considering whether Kismet stays or goes. And I actually quite like that duo, the Envoy Hydra duo on paper. I think they'd work really nicely. Hydra isn't just a slayer, he's also like the fastest player in the entire league. So, like, Envoy as an assistance to that, I think would be an upgrade on Kismet personally. The thing is, if I'm Cloud9, What's my budget? Do I have unlimited money? Because if I'm going to Toronto and trying to buy Scrappy and Envoy, like, you know, that ain't gonna be cheap, is it? That is not gonna be cheap. Maybe you can only get one or the other at that point. But um, very interesting if those conversations are being had. And that would be a serious team. I mean, Sky is assuming he stays, which I think is fine. I mean, you could even bring in Insight as well. But, you know, as I say, they don't have unlimited cash like the Falcons potentially would if they're trying to do a similar thing in the future. Then like Hydra, Scrappy, Envoy, that'd be very interesting. My feeling is if Cloud9 gets scrapped because he is their number one target, they're probably going to have to pay a lot of money for him. It opens the door potentially for Envoy to Thieves. And I think Los Angeles Thieves are a team that, as I said yesterday on the Dope Check Show, actually might be quite well positioned to capitalize here. Even Ghosty turned up the stream yesterday and, and said two princes of LA, kind of implying that maybe Envoy, the prince as he was used to be known, back on the Los Angeles Thieves. Of course, won a world championship with this organization and the fact that Toronto are looking to blow it up and make some changes definitely implies to me that... Well, Thieves should be thinking about Envoy, absolutely right. Because if you look at that team, Ghosty's not going anywhere. Joe Deceives should not be going anywhere. Nasty, I really like, but you can possibly upgrade. Kremp, I think, you know, he was good, but I think you can definitely upgrade. And if I'm Thieves and I'm seeing Toronto blow it up and potentially Cloud9 form a team of Scrap and Hydra or whatever... If you're Thieves and you want to be able to compete with those teams next season, you probably have to pick up the pieces somewhere. Whether that's trying to get a Kleenex in, whether that's trying to get an Envoy in, I think those would be the two guys to go for if you are the Los Angeles Thieves. Maybe you try and get both, I don't even know. So very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below, because also if Cloud9 are having conversations about Envoy, then they're obviously considering replacing Kismet. The thing is, if you can't get Envoy, or you don't have the money for it or whatever, Whatever, then do you replace him? But also if you don't replace him and Kiz knows that those conversations are being had, then does that affect the team on some level? If you can't get Envoy, what other options do you go for from an SMG perspective? I mean, you could try and get Kleenex, but then again, is that really, you're doing a similar thing, aren't you? At least if the problem is the funds, which I'm just speculating on that because Cloud9 probably could fork up the money to make it happen. But, you know, historically, they might not necessarily want to, especially if they're paying a big bag for Scrappy. So, you know, 
Uh, there are some questions on that. And it's not like Hydra and Kiz have bad results together. Of course, they do not. But, um, you know, going into this offseason, I was looking at New York and thinking, OK, Kismet and Skies, potential upgrade options there. They might do neither in the end. And they might drop Sib. Well, they have dropped Sib and bring in, uh, well, probably Scrappy as their target. But who knows if that's actually going to be possible. So very much interested in your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.